This is a 2020 Land Rover Defender. It's all new and we are the first in the GCC to actually have one in-house. Welcome to Daily Drive. So the Land Rover Defender has always been the 4x4 to conquer it all and it remains one of the most iconic off-roading vehicles in automotive history. So after the Second World War ended in 1945, post-war England was suffering from a shortage of materials and on top of that, the poor English folk couldn't really afford the high-end luxury sedans with their high-tech engines that Rover was producing at the time. Now all good car stories start with two brothers. Spencer and Maurice Wilkes were on the beach in Wales outlining what they wanted as a car for the people and the masses. And little did they know that that little sketch on the beach would change off-roading history forever. So the brothers went to work. They took the chassis of a Willys Jeep that the Americans brought with them for the war, put on their own body styling to it and mated it to a 1.6 liter Rover engine. They put the steering wheel in the middle so it doesn't matter if you were down under on the US of A, could drive it on any side of the road. It took them a very long time to debut the car, but a couple of months later, it was ready. The car was sold for 450 pounds and was a huge success in its first year, selling 8,000 vehicles. And they doubled that the next year, largely because the military was also very interested in having an all-terrain vehicle in their ranks. So since 1948, the Land Rover was obviously upgraded and went through several generations. It was upgraded ever so slightly each time, but maintained its ruggedness and utilitarian look. The most notable changes happened in 1979, where they adapted the new Range Rover engine into the Land Rover. And after that, in 1983, they just made the most technologically advanced coil spring system ever, which was also adapted by pretty much every single 4x4 live axle vehicle Toyota Land Cruiser and Nissan Patrol included. So in 1990, the car finally got a name, and what a name it was. Land Rover dubbed it the Defender. So the last variant was produced from 1990 to 2016. And for those 26 years, it was not only enjoyed by enthusiasts and farmers, but it was the backbone of military operations and the special forces. It was the vanguard for the, all the excursions. It went to places where nobody has ever been before. And the people who were there saw their first car and it was a Defender. It wasn't known for its motorsport or competition, but it was known for the car that could just get things done. So how do you follow that up? Land Rover had an extremely hard job ahead of them. But 62,000 tests and 1.2 million kilometers later, it's finally here. So the chief designer, Jerry McGovern, made it a mission. He wanted to make sure that he could capture the old Defender and echo it into the new one. And he's actually done so by adding a few little differences that still remain very much Defender of old. So he's done the flat face. He's also done the same thing to the rear, which is incredibly squared off. It's also got the spare wheel bolted slap bang in the middle of the car and it remains double hinged. They haven't changed it, they've kept it as it should be. Now they've also given it a hidden twist because the moment you turn on the headlights, it actually reveals the oval shape, which is quintessentially very Land Rover. And they've also done the same thing with the lights in the back. So all in all together, they very much so captured the old Land Rover with a modern twist. So Land Rover actually offers four accessory packages for this car. So you've got the Explorer, you've got the Adventure, you've got the Urban, and you have the Country. This is basically there to accommodate any lifestyle choice you may want to make, whether it be doom bashing from here till the end of time or simple city cruising. Now, once you've selected your accessory pack, that doesn't stop there. You then also have the option to tick every other box available in the Land Rover accessories department because you can kit this car out quite literally 
from end to end. You can have roof racks, you can have tent equipment, you can have side carriers, pretty much every single piece of equipment available to make this car go absolutely everywhere. Now the factor of everywhere also translates to the drivetrain because this car with relation to its predecessor is no longer body on frame. It's actually a monocoque. So it has four independent suspension units. Now they can vary from air to coil, which gives you all the terrain response that you may want, whether it be on or off road. Now the system that they've devised in this particular car is adaptable. So whatever terrain you may conquer, it will adapt and it will focus and make sure that the car stays in motion and does the right things. That technology is then also applied the moment you take it onto the road where it just acts as your dynamic driving mode. So today Land Rover has given us the 110 version, basically the four door version. You can also get a 90, which is the two door version. Thankfully, both of them share the same engine platforms, starting from the big king daddy that we have today, the P400. So as the name suggests, this three liter turbocharged six cylinder engine produces 400 horsepower and propels this car to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.1 seconds, reaching a top speed with optional 22 inch wheels of 208 kilometers an hour. And to add to all of that, it's also a mild hybrid. So the energy from braking is recuperated and put back into the system for you to save money at the next gas station. The other power plant that you can get is a two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 300 horsepower, but unfortunately doesn't have the hybrid tech that you have in the King Daddy right over here. And with that, you also get less fuel economy. So it does guzzle a little bit more gas, but will save you on the initial purchase. In Europe, you also get two more engines, which are diesels, one producing 240 horsepower, the other one 200. The cool thing about those bad boys is they have two turbos. Now, when it comes to the interior of the new Defender, they've actually done a complete redesign. So they've added this highly functional and modular layout, which is incredibly practical and also has this particular feature, which is the dashboard being part of the chassis. This isn't just there for looks. This is actually part of the frame. They've also done the same thing with the die cast aluminum center console, which is available to you in three options. So you can have it as this, you can have a jump seat in the middle, or you can use it as a walkthrough to the back. Now, when it comes to the back, the practicality doesn't end there. As you can see, I am quite a large human and I have more than enough space here to actually sit as comfortable as I'd like to be. I've got huge amounts of headroom. This is my driving position, which as you can see, my legs are running and roaming free as they would like. Now, this car also comes in three different seat variants. So you can have the two in the front, three in the middle and two in the rear. And you can also opt for the three in the front with the jump seat in the middle and then have the three in the rear and two in the back as well. So more than enough space to carry you and your friends anywhere. Now, when it comes to technology, the Defender has bulks of it. I mean, it's got 84 ECUs making sure that this car can operate the way it does. To start with, you've got the gauge cluster, which is as you'd expect digital. Land Rover carries this on into its other models as well. So you'd expect it to be in here. You can change the layouts of your screen. You can actually also have your head of display unit selected on this, and you can pretty much go through all the information that you may please right in front of you. You also get their new PV Pro system, which is their new and updated infotainment setup. It's a lot more user-friendly than it was. And I'm very glad they actually finally installed it in here. So to start from the top, you've got accounts, which I believe you can also add various people into various driving modes or set up. You've got your seat control, you've got your climate control, you've got 360 cameras, which is a really cool system where they add the feature of being able to see your car on the screen in 360 form. So it really does show you everything that's around the car wherever you may be. Now you've got your valet mode eco data, which is not really my interest, although it does have it. Now, best of all, you've got your 4x4 screen. It's actually called the 4x4i info. So terrain response information runs you through various different terrain modes that you may come across one day and know exactly what to do. Everything's automated. So the car will level and go up and down according to what it is that you're going through. We'll do it automatically, or you can manually select it as you please. Also shows you whether or not your differentials are locked, what degrees and what angles you're currently doing, and make sure that you are not going to tip over anywhere. Low traction launch is actually also very interesting because what this does 
is this makes sure that when you're on a hill, it actually gives you a nudge forward to make sure that there's no rollback and actually gives the car a little bit more momentum to go up. You've got your vehicle dimensions as well, which clearly states the information of how much degrees and angles and space you have available to go off-road. Now, same thing for on-road, although it just gives you the basic dimensions to make sure that you're not going to hit anything low enough. In addition to that, you've got navigation, you've got voice control, connects to Apple CarPlay, connects to Android Auto. It does pretty much tick all the boxes. Now, when it comes to the controls, you can also see that they're very chunky. I mean, they made this so you can access them with gloves. So here you have the buttons and manual switches to be able to lift your car up and down. You've got your hill descent control, the automatic start stop, and everything else that you need to be really dealing with from an interior standpoint. I like how they did the lever. They have used this particular lever in other models as well. However, it does really fit and actually hold nicely. So when it comes to the rear view mirror, this is an additional interesting and quite clever quirk. Now, if there are many people sitting in the back or in the case of having the jump seat in the middle, you are probably going to be looking straight in your next door passenger's face. However, Land Rovers put a little camera up on the antenna and made sure that by the flick of a switch, you can see the back. It's actually quite clever stuff. Now, for the last three days, I've been making notes upon notes and upon notes. It is very difficult to say everything about this car and to speak about every single detail because there is so much of it. But the question I ask myself most of all, because I am a diehard Land Rover Defender fan, I have liked the Defender from the beginning. I always have. A lot of my family members have them and it's a car that I have very fond memories in. So this car is important to me and I want to like it and I want to love it and I want to be happy with how they develop this car. And to me, I really think Land Rover has smashed it. I really think they did an amazing job to bring the Defender back into the 21st century. So that was our review on the 2020 Land Rover Defender. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let us know what you think about this car in the comment sections below, as well as don't forget to subscribe because we will be taking out this car on the road and off road in the near future. And finally, thank you Euro Motors for giving us the opportunity to drive it. That's it for us. Take care.